Hello viewers and many thanks for tuning in to Pillar TV. My name is Jimmy Njoroge and this is The Spotlight, the show that puts your leaders on the spot. Today we begin by uh, sending our condolences to the families and relatives and also the entire Nyeri County for the loss of their governor, Dr. Wahome Gakuru. And also as we talk about, as we wait for the laying down of uh, the late governor's body, we still face a stalemate in the country. And today we are talking about also the spread out of the repeat presidential poll and the aftermath of that exercise. And to help me discuss and dissect that, I'm joined by our very own political analyst, Mr. Julius uh, Munende Mushono from my extreme left, Karibu Bwana Mushono. Thank you. And also on the set, I'm joined by Tebere Ward, member of County Assembly, Honorable Gadson Mushina. Karibu kwa kipindi Bwana. Uh, Santi sana. Karibu ni sana. Yeah, Santi. So, uh, Maybe your opening remarks, Bwana Mushono, on this. I want, I want you to tell us whether you think this country is headed to the, to the right direction, given the petition that was taken to the Supreme Court. I first would want to extend my condolences to the family of uh, our governor of Nyeri, and to the family, and also to Wakanzi, Wasemu, Yoya Nyeri. It's a big bro. Particularly in this time that we had a very brilliant guy in economics and strategy. Uh, Nyeri has lost, but in this time of mourning, we are together with Nyeri. Um, in our country, we are facing a serious problem. So this political environment is not very conducive, particularly for business. And regarding the petitions that is already in court, we cannot overrule Raira involvement in it. He has used NGOs, he has used individuals, he has used all tactics, both good and bad, to make sure that he's in power. And therefore there is no way we can separate what is in the Supreme Court and Raira. Yes, Moshimiwa, we were waiting with bated breath to see if someone goes to court to challenge President Uru Kenyatta's election. Yeah. Do you feel this, any of these cases hold water? Uh, one thing we cannot rule out the issue of holding water because there must be issues. Nothing can be 100% uh, uh, okay. So we expect anything, and we were still expecting that. So it is not a wonder, uh, because we knew, uh, as my fellow uh, uh, participant has said, we expected Raida to do anything, or NASA to do anything, either through proxy or through themselves, uh, by themselves. So it is nothing new to us, and uh, we, we, we still wait and see. Because uh, we know God has something to do with this country of ours. And uh, from where we have come from, from the experience we had from the other case, we cannot rule out anything. So we are ready for anything, sure, for any eventuality. For Shimiwa, yes. Going back to 2010 when we passed the new constitutional dispensation, which of course uh, sought out issues of autonomy, of the, the separation of powers. Of power. Do you feel like uh, the autonomy of judiciary is probably over-exaggerated because now anybody can go to court and still hold this country at ransom as we are having the situation in, in the country? Uh, one thing I can say is uh, myself, according to the constitution, uh, during that time of 2010, I was totally against this constitution yes. myself. Because one thing, I could see Kenya was not ready for such kind of a constitution. It built a lot of institutions that the country could not have hold. Still, it had a lot of ills. Although they told us that uh, uh, we shall do the amendments in, in the near future. Now what we are seeing is a culmination of, uh, of issues yeah. that were not addressed at that time. They are, being now, they, they, they are coming out now clearly. Yeah. And people can see that uh, we are just, the constitution is just mixing us up in this country. Yes. What I can say is, According to the constitution, the separation of power, the court sometimes is going overboard. Like yesterday, uh, there was a judge who, who said that uh, the, 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 the celebration for the 10th October should get back to, should be also be celebrated. Yes. And the constitution is very clear. You see now, the courts are trying to interpret the constitution in their own way, instead of now following the spirit of the constitution. Yeah and finally confusing us. Yes. So if we don't get into the, the down to business and uh, come up with a good way of interpreting this constitution of ours, mm -hmm. this country is doomed to, to fail through this sure. constitution. Well, do you feel that judiciary requires a total overhaul at this no, point? No, cons the constitution we are having is like 
it's it's on the face value it's very good yeah it looks very lucrative it's like when you are given a note of one thousand sure the face value of one thousand is a serious note but what can that was one thousand buy buy our constitution is so good on the face value we could summer yeah. but when it comes to its interpretation its implementation its operationalization it has so many clerks we have the doctrine of separation of power but the freedom that has given to people in this constitution are so big. I agree with former President Moy. Moy is a Mwafrika ni Kiswangumu. And this constitution is a Mwafrika. Ini a Mzungu. We need to be to educate our members further and practice this constitution. In whereby liberal organizations or liberal government has been uh, introduced like ours, first of all, it is protested for more than five years. We did not protest. We, we passed the Katiba on 2010, on 2013, we are on the ballot with the same constitution. What are we saying? Don't we have constitutional experts to advise our country? Yes. Talking of protesting in Weshimiwa, yeah. Raila Odinga is now talking about having interim uh, government, of course, because he, according to him there is no government in place. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel when he talks about having an, an interim government, this is a precursor to having a Nusumkate sort of a government? Of course, and we knew that is where Raida was heading. Yes. Nobody could not see that, that Raida was heading to that. It's only that he has come through another angle, not now saying directly Nusumkate. Yes. He is now trying to come in, in, a, in, a, in another way. Because you know Raida knows how to, to twist the game. Eh? Yeah. To, he knows how to make games uh, look more attractive. Eh? Yes. That's now what he is doing. So, it is the same thing. Whatever now he is trying to say, he is saying in another way. Instead of saying direct, Serikari Anusumuka, Anusumuka Tatukawana is Serikari. But uh, he has sensed defeat. He has totally sensed defeat. Even you agree with that? We have interim government. Uh -huh. Yes. We have transitional government. Yes. What do we mean by this? Yeah. It's so inclusive. Mm. Any person who is a stakeholder needs to be included in this. In this Sunni Serikari Anusumkate. Now mm. Serikari Anusumkate cannot work. Why can it work? Because now we don't have anyone with authority. Remember, we have something we call bureaucratic system. Yes. This bureaucratic system, the system will be too wrong for us to be able to effect to be uh, effect uh, policy in Kenya mm. and therefore to takua new masana kwa yo miesisita. So I'm saying this. Let us swear in the president. Yes. Let us move on. Yeah. Raida we withdrew from the elections. Allow me to cite two countries. Rwanda, the opposition, we withdrew from? Yeah, from the elections. From the race. Mm. And we didn't not go for fresh nominations. The president won on Rand's right, 98%. Mm. Let's go to Sierra Leone. They also withdrew. Yeah. They won in Rand's right because this was ordered by the court, the Supreme Court. Another thing that gives me uh, hope is that Maraga himself voted. Yeah. When to vote? Well, that one means what? Mm. It means that this issue is legitimate. Yes. Yeah. Let me bring you in, Moshimio. And, yeah. and because you are a member of county assembly, I want us to look at what is happening within the National Assembly. Because mm. we see members of parliament boycott sessions, very critical sessions to form house committees. And of course that is paralyzing operations within the house. Do we still have hope that the National Assembly is going to deliver from where you sit? Yes. Me, I'm double sure it is going to deliver because what NASA is praying is hypocritical uh, politics. Because you cannot say that you are not going to attend uh, the sittings of the assembly and you are receiving a salary. Why then are you receiving that salary? Then you should even boycott even your salary. So if there are men enough and women enough, those, uh, those guys from NASA, let them resign. We have, we have other ele uh, 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 by elections in their areas. If they are ready, they want to save the, the, their people. So what we are seeing now, the, the, the parliament will continue. It will continue because now we have other parties which have, who, who parties that have uh, members in the assembly. Yeah. So the Jubilee can still use those members to make these committees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mwashibu is talking about uh, the members, the NASA, um, NASA allied, uh, members allied to NASA resigning. Mm. And we've, we've also witnessed uh, NASA leader Raila Odinga talking about forming a, a people's assembly. Mm. Do you feel that those in the National Assembly and the Senate need to resign first so that they can go and form the, the people's assembly? 
Uh, let us go back to where Moshimiwa and also cited about the weaknesses in this constitution. Yeah. Look at the same weakness in this constitution. It's a provision whereby we can have a people's assembly within the setup of the context of the constitution that we are having. It is not provided for. Where they are coming in is in the first chapter of our constitution where they say the supreme power of running this nation is vested with the people. With the people. And the people can be represented directly or indirectly. Indirectly. Does that one now give you the mandate to go and form public Baraza? <laughs> now, Wetangula says that yeah. this, has been, this is uncut in Article 1 of our constitution. Yeah. Mm. Do you feel like you share the same sentiments? No, no, no. I don't share the same sentiments because eh, the, uh, what NASA is doing, they never consulted anybody. The readers, they did it themselves. They, they say they are going to hold these, these assemblies. Mm. And you very well know that the Constitution is very clear. When you, you are doing something or you want to, to, to do something to the public, you have first to go back to the, to the public, hold public participations for the public now to give you the green light to be able to, to introduce what you want to introduce. So whatever NASA is doing is just a gimmick. Yes. They just want to, uh, to make this country ungovernable through crooked, uh, crooked ways. So, I, I, I don't buy into that. So yeah. you feel there's not a platform maybe that can uh, uh, result to meaningful engagements? No, 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 not at all, not at sure. all. If you look at the way the NASA is coming, it's trying to, inv to involve everyone in this game of Nusum Kate. The churches have been involved, yes. the civil society has been involved, mm. the public has been involved, but it's not in a structured way. Yeah. You, they are using political, Manipulation, manipulation to get what they want to get. But remember, every other person has an individual right to represent himself in court or anywhere in this republic as it has been given by the constitution. Mm -hmm. Like yesterday we had Mandamanoya, the lecturers of the university. The universities, of, yeah. The, of the universities. Did you see the police? Uriona Mawe. See, they were, they were peaceful. Very peaceful. They sent their message home. Yes. Yeah. They went back and mm. the country continued. Yes. Why is it that Tukiwa and Amanda Mano and Asa, we are having issues? Yes. This is an issue we need to interrogate carefully. Yeah. Uh, Mwishimiwa, the withdrawal of Raila Odinga from the repeat presidential poll, do you feel this is one thing that has probably culminated to what we are having today? One thing, right? Was that an exit strategy for Raila? An Englishman said, if you run away from the problem, you're part of that problem. Yes. So what the writer did to withdraw, he just showed that he's a coward. Mm -hmm. Because if you're man enough, why should you run away from a, a, a battle? Yes. And you are reading your, 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 your battalion to the battle. Mm -hmm. So whatever the writer did, uh, it was not, uh, he was not supposed to do like that as a man. Because he was supposed to, to, to enter into the, to the election. Yes. Watch our Shindwe. In the petition case of 2013, the Raida Area Supreme Court, mm -hmm. it, say, it talks about abandoning the yes. elections. In case one of the people dies or abandons the election, the election. we go for fresh nominations. Yes. But what we are dealing with is not fresh uh, elections. Mm. We are dealing with repeat, repeat elections. elections. No, what lawyer should be interpreting to us is what supersedes the other. Mm. Is it the court order or is it the court precedence, yeah. which was given by William Mutunga. Now, as we talk about these issues, there are calls for secession. Mm. And there's, a, there's also a move by NASA leaders to economic boycott and sabotage certain products. I want us to analyze those issues and surrounding issues uh, as we, when we come back, but right now we have to go on a short break. Come back, talk about that uh, incisively. Uh, many thanks for keeping it Pillar TV. We now go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back. Pillar TV, shaping your destiny.
Kila TV Shaping Your Destiny Welcome back to Spotlight and today we are analyzing the aftermath of the repeat presidential polls and we are coming to you from nice digital city in Moya and I'm um, with uh, Mr. Julius Mushono, who is a political analyst and research scholar and also a uh, member of County Assembly for Tebere Ward. Uh, before we went to break, we were talking to, we were talking, we were addressing ourselves to issues of economic sabotage. Mweshimiwa Mushina, yeah. how do you treat NASA's calls for economic sabotage? Uh, one thing, it's quite unfortunate that uh, NASA leaders cannot even uh, uh, see that when they call for economic sabotage, they are killing their own people. Because, l let's take uh, for instance a company like uh, Safaricom. Yes. The staffs of Safaricom, about 30-40% of the staffs come from which side? They come from that side. They have a lot of staffs who come from their side. What are they telling us? They want those children those sons and daughters of them, themselves to go back, to, to go back home. Yes. They think that uh, they, they, they want to sabotage Uhuru, but Uhuru is comfortable with, the, with his work, the presidency. Yes. What they are doing, they are killing their people instead of thinking that, uh, instead of uh, making that their people benefit. Look at the case now uh, of the young people who were on, the, uh, uh, on media the other day complaining that they are now out in business yes. because of their leaders. So are we building Kenya or we are, we are, we are making our people, or we are impoverishing our people, really? Yes. Let, me, let me bring you on this. What exactly does it mean for our economy as a country? Uh, the whole issue of economic boycott. One way or another, it's going to affect. Lakini there is one thing I would want the NASA to realize, that the market of Brookside, that is in Kenya, is minute yes compared to the market that is outside in the country and the employment that is created by brookside the darameas and safaricom it's for the people of kenya i agree yeah. with omar Hassan that raira is the round of poverty sure look at it it tells people don't go to work it tells people don't buy your own products the ones that are manufactured into kenya is that the president that you are looking for However much I would be supporting Raira in his endeavor to fight for democracy in Kenya, it cannot work that way. You fight it through meaningful ways that are geared towards political stability and economic stability. Yes, now as still on that one, Amushulu, as NASA tells its supporters to boycott, you know, products of Safaricom, you know, uh, uh, others like Bitco, is this something that maybe concerns you that they want to have their own? In, in a way of secession, so that they can have their own products uh -huh. as a separate country? Uh, look at it this way. I have looked at this issue of Raira, and I've looked at this issue of Kenyatta. You can see these two families that are fighting on the expense of the others. Yeah. I'm not saying that uh, Kenyatta is the most appropriate person to lead us. We have other serious people who can lead our country. Sure. But as per now, this is the person who have been elected by the people as per opportunity, time and chance. So what should Raira do? Raira should accept that. Instead of going out there and saying now, because this Brookside belongs to Kenyatta family, don't drink from it. Because he has shares in Safaricom, don't. We cannot go that direction. Moshibiwa, we, we've seen uh, some sections of Nyanza mm. joining Kosti in the secession calls. But also as we talk about this, a section of Ukambani leaders are now saying that they are not part of the secession. Where do you see leader of Waipa, Kalonzo Musioka, in this whole spectacle? One thing, I congratulate the, the Ukambani leaders because they have started seeing the signs where this person wants to take this nation. Yeah. Same case with Mombasa. We saw leaders from Mombasa coming up and also saying now this is not uh, the agenda that we, we thought we were for. Even if Joho says they succeed, we have leaders who have said no, we can't do that. So what we are seeing now is that uh, NASA is dying a slow death. And they are not ready to come to the reality. 
You know what he's doing? These are the last kicks of a dying horse. So he's trying to make himself relevant. But the truth is, people have started seeing the sense. His, his people have also seen that he wants to take this country into drains. And they're not ready for that. Maybe Mwishimua, should we dig deeper back to 2013 when we came up with the national accord that sought to sort out the issues of historical injustice? Do you feel from where you sit that the issue of the, the national accord has been implemented to sort out the, the you know the economic uh, imbalances, the development imbalances in some regions? But when we talk of I, I, I listened yesterday to uh, the read of majority in the assembly, Adenduari, when he was talking about what the government has done in his region. Yes. And when I look at what he was saying and what NASA is saying, they have been marginalized. If you look at the people who are talking, it's Nyanza and some parts of coast. But when you look at the economic growth of those areas, it supersedes even Ukabani. It supersedes even the east, uh, northeastern region. Yeah. But uh, you, you wonder what type of uh, cessation, they say that they have been economically sabotaged. How? And uh, we see the president, do, uh, the, the government, doing mega projects in their areas, whereas some areas have no mega projects. So it, it, it beats logic. What, what uh, economic sabotage they usually say, talk about? Because if there are, there are those who can talk, yes. it's the Northeastern people. Mm -hmm. And Duare clearly stated that it is during this regime of Uhuru, Moigai, Kenyatta, and uh, uh, Ruto. That is, this is the time they have seen tarmac road yeah. in the area. This is the time they have seen an airport in the area. So what kind of sabotage, sabotage do NASA normally talk about? Do you agree with Mwashimio? Now, look at it this way. We went into devolution. And devolution introduced one thing called equalization fund. Fund, yeah. That tries now to bring those poorer counties aboard. Some of the money that is in Nairobi is taken to Northeastern. To Northeastern. And that is in Northeastern is not brought to us. Yes. So what, are, what marginalization are they talking about? When devolution came, every county is allocated. Yeah. So if the governors cannot be able to effectively budget that money, sure. so that it can help their people in their specific counties, please give us a break. Yes. Can, can, mm. can they just tell us mm. what they have done with the billions they have been given yes. for those five years now? The every, last time and also time. every every county has its own history. Yes. Yeah. Either that vivas or that not vivas. Viva. And, and if you look at the, the, the real issues, eh? mm. like here in Kirinyaga, mm. when we are getting 3.8 billion, mm. they are getting 11 billion. Like Mombasa, they are getting uh, 8 billion. Other areas, mm. what have they done with that money? Yeah. I want us to shift gears a bit and talk about education. There's a proposed new education system. Mm which proposes to you know, replace the, the 844 system. Bwana Moshono, beginning with you, what are your quick thoughts concerning that? that in one way or the other, I'm an educationist, and yeah. I've been involved in education for over 20, 25 years. And I know what it means by a good educational system. What I'm asking the government is to bread it, to make sure that this educational system is in tandem with the requirements of our economy. Sure. Because we may bring in an institution, an educational system, that is not going to bring economic prosperity to our country. Look at the 844 system now. We have so much unemployment because of this system. Because it was not in it them if we are our economic development and our level of growth. What I'm not really contented with is where will be the spirit of competition? Are we likely now to interfere with our quality of education? So I'm asking those people who are coming out with that policy, as they implement it, let us involve people so much so that the members of the public, as we say in Parliament that we have public participation, they understand the system. Yes, let's also address ourselves, Moshimiwa, to yeah. the issues of local politics. Uh, Kirinyaga governor has been, uh, there has been infightings concerning uh, some money which was based to conduct President Uhuru Kenyatta's election campaigns. And there the, the are people who are saying, or supporters who contributed the money, saying that that fund has been embezzled. Have you heard of such a, an allegation? Oh yeah, I have heard it through the media. Yes. I've heard it through the media. But one thing I would like to say is uh, uh, perception sometimes can be miscontrolled. Eh? Yes. Uh, but it's always good when transparency 
is, is, is taken into consideration. It is true, there was money raised. Even I was one of those who, uh, who contributed. The, the retro I contributed. But uh, it is not good to politicize everything. There are ways of which this money can be accounted for. Because there was a committee that used to, to manage the fund. Yes. What could have been done for these issues not to, to be blown off, those who are grieved, they could have now uh, call, uh, told the, the governor to call for the meeting. Yes. Then they ask the questions there, yes. and the question will be answered, sure. the, the way the money was used. Mm -hmm. But it's not wise mm -hmm. when uh, we, we brought things out of proportion. Okay. Although, although the governor herself said she collected 52 million, it was in the news. Yes. It, that is not, not something to hide because she's the one who said it was in all the medias that uh, she collected 52 million for the campaigns. So when, you, when people hear about 52 million, uh, people must, ma must start uh, clamoring for, now, for transparency. You are actively involved in, of course I know you, you are supporting President Huru. Yes, totally. Do you feel that that money has, can be accounted for the 52 million? Uh, I think it can be accounted because there was a committee. Yes. The committee that used to do that uh, to, to manage. So what the committee is supposed to do is to come up clear and show the records to exonerate themselves from the brim. Do you feel it was blown out of proportion? No, it was not blown out of, cons of, of proportion. Yes. There, there are a few things that I would want to pick from what Mweshmiwa is saying. Transparency. Yes. This man was corrected. So we have a committee that is dealing with it. It needs to clearly tell us this is the amount that was corrected. Yeah. These are the supporting documents. And this is the way the money was spent. I'm seeing people are saying there were no meaningful campaigns, no meaningful mobilization. Sure. I was also in this county. Did you see them? If you, there is always value for money. Good. And sometimes it is important now to say the truth. Mm -hmm. I want you to give me answers ah. to this. Yeah. Whether you saw the, 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 yeah. So the I, you know when, when we have been challenged as who have a knowledge to help other people yes. to dissect issues. And I want to be true to the cause here. Yeah. One of the issues that I would want the governor to do is let her not hide. I would want the governor to be more on the rim right of the public because the public wanna say our money. Yes. We want her to be seen because we are the people we elected her. And we want to support her to develop this, this county. county. But we also want her to reciprocate by coming out and also talking to us. Yes. Let us not have serious systems. When it comes back to the issue of money, uh, we, ha we could see road shows, but we didn't see vigorous mobilization of voters the way we had seen it during the 26th, eighth elections in August. It was so vigorous. This one was not vigorous. Yes. But if we can have transparency, there's nobody who can prove that money was stolen. Yeah. Yeah. But Moshimu. if we have the documents, yes, we can be able to speak. Okay, Bwana Moshono mentioned something about, you know, involvement of, of, of the public. Yeah. And you've been on record also with, together with um, Mwea MP, uh, Kavinga Wadayo, talking about uh, marginalization of Mwea, maybe during the formation of the cabinet yeah. in, the, in the county of Kirinyaga. Do you still hold this, uh, this grudge? No, one thing I would like to correct you, yes. I don't have any grudge. I, I am just talking about the issues that I want to be, I want them addressed. Go ahead. Because I'm re people's representative. I was elected to represent my people. Yes. And when I see my people are grieved, I have to talk on their behalf. I'm their representative. Yes. As the constitution says, they can represent themselves or they can talk through the represent, their representatives and I'm one of them. So, so which are these issues? That the you... issues which are there, we have what we call traditional injustices in Kirinyaga of Mwea. When you look at the, the least developed area is Mwea. In terms of roads, in terms of clean water, in terms of uh, resource, re resource allocation, we have been totally, totally uh, sidelined on that. When it comes to national government projects, like roads, tarmac roads, in fact, if it were not for this road from, from Makutano to Meru, we don't have any other road, a tarmac road so, in so Kirinyaga. So, your bottom so, line, you are talking about uh, development projects, not yes. in terms of representation. Even representation. One thing, let me tell you, 
Yes. We, we, we hoped that when the, the, the cabinet was being formed, eh? Mwea, because it holds the, the, the bigger number in votes and also the population, yes. as the constitution says, it could have been given a lion's share in, in, the, in, in the cabinet. In the cabinet formation. Yes, I'll give you 30 seconds each to, to conclude because but we have I, I to wind up. To but have to, do you agree? I want <laughs> to respond to I, I would want quickly. to Mwashimiwa. Mm. We, uh, we had said that every other county has its own injustices. Sure. Like, like now if I talk about Kirinyaga Central, mm. you realize now that Kirinyaga Central has been sidelined because the governor do not like that place. Mm. The same way in the previous government, Daddy did not like because of their political affiliation so <coughs> what i'm saying is that uh, we need to interrogate carefully the way in which we allocate resources yes. so that we don't feel that the areas that are marginalized, marginalized. marginalized. and we also yeah. the areas that are left out mm. because if it is appointment everybody has equal share the governor represents all of us, whether we voted for her or, or we did not vote for her. All right, we have to wind up. But Mwishimio, I want yeah. to give you each 30 seconds because back and forth we have to find a, a solution. Yeah. What do you feel is uh, good for this country? I want you to speak to Kenya straight to that camera. Uh, Kenyans, one thing I would like to say is we have a nation to build. And uh, this nation is ours, all of us. And if this nation goes into dreams, we go all of us. But there is one thing I normally say. These people clamoring for these big seats, those people who are telling us we secede, those people telling us we, we resist, these people, once this nation goes into dreams, they will be overseas. They have their children there. They have land there. They have their homes there. We as normal Kenyans, the ordinary Kenyans, we shall be left here agonizing in poverty and also in battles. So let's maintain peace as Kenyans. Let's wait for the institutions that are there constitutionally to make sure that this country is governable. We have the institution of the, the judiciary, the executive, and also the legislature. Let us trust these institutions and make sure that the country is governable. Correct. But I'm sure your final thoughts quickly. I want to tell Kenyans today that I am a Kikui. And what I have, I have not been given by the state. There is this misconception that when the president comes from a place, you get all the money from state house and it is put into your pockets. No. Number two, every person represents himself individually in this country. So the president represents himself. Don't die for him. Three, what comes first? Is it economic prosperity or is it political stability? We start with political stability and then we go to economic, economic stability. So let us first of all deal up with the same small issues of politics. We move our country forward. Yes. Once we move our country forward, we will be followed by economic prosperity. Sure. Thank you very much. Peace, Kenyans. Yes. Sure, sure. Uh, it's always a pleasure, Bwana Moshono Julius, uh, our very own political analyst uh, and also member of County Assembly for Tebere Ward, Gadson Mushina, uh, talking about the aftermath of the repeat presidential polls and the seemingly political standoff in the country. We come to the end of the show at this particular juncture. I'll see you next week. My name is Jimmy Jorogi. <laughs>